Hey everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you are here. This is it. This is the episode, most requested episode to date. You are here. So if it is your first time watching uh, or listening, thanks. Thanks for checking us out. I truly, truly appreciate it. Hopefully you can go back and follow some of the other uh, videos or podcasts, listen to them, thumbs up them. And uh, I definitely appreciate that. And if you are here again and you've checked us out once or twice or ten times, or you're here every single week, which is even better, man, you are part of the nation. And it is because of you that we do these, so I truly appreciate that. Uh, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all the comments, uh, all the text messages saying, what's up, love the show. I love hearing that. Best part of my week when people send me stuff that way. Um, thanks for commenting, thumbs upping the videos on YouTube and everything else, sharing, talking, everything. You guys and gals are awesome. Thanks for being part of the nation, one of the cool kids. And, um, yeah, if you want to shoot me a text direct, uh, please do so. 862-312-2026. And... I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource, so all of my clients and customers out there, you guys rock also. It's because of you that I can eat food. So <laughs> thanks for uh, always putting orders in for me. I literally, I have the best customers. I have people who will, they're putting in an order that's 100 bucks. Uh, they'll call me, they'll text me, they'll vox me, they'll whatever. I got people who put in $10,000 orders. They'll call me dumb. I love it. I appreciate it. Truly, guys, that is uh, the best reward I can get um, putting in supplies through me. Being that it's winter, uh, everybody is slowing down, but uh, definitely appreciate that. Um, and shout outs for this week. We got a few of them. Uh, first off, Mr. Glass, uh, thank you. He commented on Facebook and uh, or, um, YouTube, actually. And I truly appreciate it. I love conversations where people open stuff up. Uh, Q's Window Cleaning. What up, man? Thanks for the kind words. Uh, and a big, big thank you to Jordy from The Window Cleanse. If you guys saw, we did a Shoot the Poo live session with him. Uh, that went awesome. We're going to be doing some more stuff together uh, here in the future. I just know it. His channel's awesome. His videos are awesome. And this is one of the topics that he also um, is going to be talking about in the future. So... Thank you, Jordy, for being the man. And finally, the last winner from last week's contest is Bill Link. Bill, if you're watching, which you know you are because you're part of the nation, uh, just go ahead and email me your information. Anybody else wants to email me, it's josh at windowcleaningresource.com. Uh, if you want to enter the contest, every single week we pick a winner uh, from people on YouTube who comment on the video. So right now... Stop everything you're doing. Thumbs up the video. It's all you got to do. Subscribe, which would be awesome. But then comment down below anything. What's up? Hey, how are you? Awesome show. Sucky show. Whatever you want to comment, put it down there. You could win. Bill just won a $50 gift card or $50 in store credit, really, uh, for Window Cleaning Resource and the ultimate swag bag. You get the shirt, the pins, you're getting sticker packs, you're getting the whole thing sent to you. Send me your address. If you want to win, we do it every week, so you have a huge chance to win. Definitely, definitely do that. Uh, before we start, this uh, bad example of a, a, a beard here is to prove to somebody who was talking to me that anybody can grow a beard. I'm growing it, man. I'm growing it. It looks awful, so... <laughs> I'm proven I can't grow a beard, man. I, w I wish I could grow a beard. I know that I would be uh, just that much more popular like Luke and Fluff and all the other uh, amazing beard wearers, but I can't do it. So anyway, on to our show. This week, we are talking about getting commercial jobs, getting commercial clients, getting commercial customers, getting commercial. It's huge. This is a big one. Here is why this is such a big topic. It's because it's a different beast. We have in our window cleaning industry, and this forwards over to pressure washing too. If you're a pressure washer watching, uh, comment down below. Let me know you're a pressure washer. I love hearing from you guys too. Um, but it's there's three customers. There's a route customer. 
there's a residential customer, and there's a commercial customer. Those are the real big three, right? Residential, it's its own thing. You can mail to them. You can EDDM. Sometimes it works. You can do all that different thing and contact them without actually that face-to-face direct. Route doesn't allow you to do that. You got to go into these places, right? You stop in. You got to talk to them. You got to give them some information. You got to walk out. Now, the difference between route and commercial in my eyes, I don't even know if there's a particularly an example uh, or specific to it, but this is what I always say and say to my guys. So uh, frequency is really where this comes in. If you can do it once a month or less, once a month, once every two weeks, once a week, weekly being the best, right? That is route. If it's more than once a month, I'm not putting you on a route because it doesn't make sense to have a route once every two months, right? Every six months, three months, whatever. So that is commercial. Commercial has its own slots in your scheduling. But commercial is a job that is going to not be a mom pa. It's going to be corporate. It's going to be run by facility maintenance company. It's going to be property manager. It's going to be some kind of building supervisor, something like that. They're going to be specific to just that building. And it's a whole building. It's not just one piece of it, like a storefront maybe. It's going to be more than $1,000 uh, a job. Now, I've had some commercial jobs that are, you know, seven hundred fifty or seven hundred fifty dollars, uh, and I guess that would be com- considered commercial. But really, you're looking for those thousand dollars. A chunk of your day is going towards that, right? You're going to send multiple guys. You're going to have them there for a day or a week, even better, and it's going to be a large ticket uh, job. Now, in our industry, fresh washing and window cleaning, the larger the ticket the more back-breaking, ass-kissing you're going to have to do. And that's just a fact. Because the bigger the job, the bigger the fish. You can't just go ahead and take a little hook and put it out there. You can't net it. You can't, you know, it is a big thing. You have to do it. One of our largest uh, contracts that we ever had uh, was about six months in the works. Uh, I mean, hundreds of emails, calls, meetings, setups, blah, blah, blah. They finally pulled the trigger it wasn't even like, yeah, we got it. It was like, oh, finally. I stopped calling these people, you know? But persistence is huge in commercial because a property manager has so many other things on their plate that they're not thinking about window cleaning. That's your job. Your job is to think about the window cleaning, the pressure washing, the concrete cleaning, the facade. The That's your job. So taking that half from them is great, but they don't care. They got to worry about the heating, the electric the snow removal if you're in a cold area, the tenant in and out, the clean outs, the getting new people there, making sure that they're keeping their bosses happy, right? It's so far down on their schedule of things that they do every day that you have to be the one to contact them. It's not annoying them. This is not a residential customer where if you call them once a week, once every three days, you're annoying them. You're calling just, hey, I know you probably forgot. I just want to give you a heads up. Did you get the Did you get the invoice? Did you get the um, uh, bid or proposal? Did you get my information? Just letting them, making a presence is the first step. Now, with you know commercial, there is something that is involved in commercial that you've never run into for the most part with route or residential, and that's the gatekeeper. So a gatekeeper is the person that sits at the front of the building, a receptionist, the whatever. The gatekeeper's job is to filter the crap before it gets to the person who actually matters. Now you've met these people, it's the person you walk in and they go, hello. You're like, yeah, yeah, so I'm here to see Mr. Smith. Do you have an appointment? Uh, no, I don't, yeah, he's not seeing people. He's not here. He's on a meeting, he's on a call. He'll have to call you back. Can I take your number? Right, That person's job is to stop people like you from getting to them. They are the gatekeeper. Now, the gatekeeper is the biggest part of this whole scenario that you've never dealt with before to this extent because that's their job. It's even their job to certain angles that they will filter junk mail. And guess who's junk mail? You are. I'm sorry, your piece is awesome. It's still junk mail, right? It's still an ad. It's still a Pizza Hut coupon in its essence. So that kind of stuff doesn't work with a gatekeeper. So now you're taking your whole idea of how to sell to this in a whole nother direction. That's why we always say there's three beasts, you know, route, residential, commercial. Three completely different ways to sell. And if you're selling to the commercial like a route, 
you're not going to get commercial. If you're selling a route like commercial, you're not going to get route. You know, there's just different ways. So you have to tune it in and you have to kind of focus the way that you do it. But how do you get past the gatekeeper? There's lots of ways. There's lots of little things to kind of get past the gatekeeper. We talked about mail. Here is a great way to get by mail-wise past the gatekeeper. Getting it to the person that you actually want to get it to. And it's called an unsolicited bid. Now, you can do an unsolicited bid or you can actually do a full packet. But here's the thing. If you send a postcard, they're going to throw it away. If you send a manila folder or a manila um, envelope, right? You send one of those or you send a first class mail, right? A bubble envelope or something of those size where it is a thing. It's not just a cardboard cheap. It's, it's something. And inside of there, you put one of your pens, one, some of your business cards, or your flyer, information. We had commercial packets, which was a folder when you open the folder, there was sheets that were cut, die cut. So you had one label, you could pull it out. The one label below that, you could pull it out. The page was a little shorter. Another, all this stuff, full color, super glossy. As this is the wow factor. This is when you have to stand out above everybody else that's sending them their crap. You got to send yours. And if it's in a bubble envelope, which may cost you two or three bucks, Maybe less if you get them online in bulk or whatever. If you send that address to the person, they're not going to open it. They're not going to throw it in the garbage. They're not going to assume it's spam. They're going to assume it's something. So you just got through the gatekeeper, right? An unsolicited bid itself is that same style with all that information, the glossiest, thickest, best paper you could ever get from Steve over at QPS or at Cost Solutions, right? If you get the best thing you can possibly get, pack it in with goodies and shoot it out also in those folders, I would have an unsolicited bit. Now, listen, any building, for the most part, I'm not talking interior glass, I'm talking about buildings. You can see everything you need to see from the outside. Drive around. These buildings are open to the public. You driving around is not a big deal. But you can see all the glass. If you see an outside piece of glass, there's obviously another side to that for the inside. Now, inside partition, you would always put something along the lines of will bid in person or um, additional information needed, something like that. But an uh, actual proposal or uh, unsolicited bid is you going around and saying, okay, this building is going to be X amount. I'm going to put that in there too. So now, on top of everything they got... Everything that blew them, wow, look at these guys. These, this is crazy stuff. There's more and more in here. There's more. They get to the thing and be like, oh, there's all the prices. Now, they don't have to say, yes, you can bid. They don't have to bother with you. They don't have to do anything. They're getting a bid that already has the price on it. Now, you've already wowed them, and now you've given them the information that they need. Now, they can make an educated guess or even the guess to call you, even if you're not quite where, you know, where they uh, are price-wise with the other guys, now they have everything they need to be able to call you and open up the conversation. Because just like anything, property managers, I would even say more than any other style, is talking to. Yeah, the mom pods, you got to get in there and talk to them. But a property manager, somebody who maintains the building, and that person is going to be doing everything, right? Heating, air, tenants, blah, blah, blah. But that person, they need to build a rapport with you because they need to be able to call you on a whim, on a notice, on a nothing, on a holiday, on a something, and know that they're going to get you. I've had buildings where I've gotten calls on the, this is not an exaggeration. If you've got, you know, screaming stomach, just try not to listen. But I'm telling you, I got a call, 4th of July, from a building manager. He goes, hey, somebody got in the building on the 4th of July, the parade route went right there. They took a dump in the hallway. We had done janitorial for them at the same time. So we'd gotten all their services, pressure washing, janitorial, uh, window cleaning, inside, outside, office, turnover. We had everything for this building. He called me 4th of July. He said, I don't care how much you charge me. I don't care what you have to do to do this. Just make it happen. It was one of those jobs I didn't want to do. You know, it took me, I wasn't going to put one of my staff on it. I had somebody offer uh, because I was talking about it, but it was after the fact. I don't want to do that. I did it myself. It was miserable. Yes, but I charged them like $800 to pick up a turd, basically. So 
it's disgusting, I know. But you have to be that person, right? They need to trust you like that. Because if you're just another contractor that's just one of the per people that are in there, they can get rid of you just the same, right? So you want to be somebody that that property manager knows and loves. And sending all that information is already starting to build that. You've gotten past the gatekeeper, which is the number one rule to getting to the right person. Now, hopefully you're not going to be picking up turds uh, as a window cleaner, but if they say, hey, the building owners are coming next week. I completely forgot. I need these windows done. Yes, I know. It's a pain in the butt. But here's the thing. If you have them to owe you a favor because you got them out of a bind, you're, you're in like Flint and you have it sealed, and that's where property managers are. The nice thing about property managers is they have multiple locations. They usually are managing multiple buildings. If you get one, you're going to get them all, but you have to build a rapport. So getting past the gatekeeper, that's first. Unsolicited bids, that's a great way to bypass them. What's another good way to bypass that gatekeeper, right? The only person in the building who probably really hates their job. Uh, mildly power trip. By the way, gatekeepers, that's their problem is that they don't have power ever, and now they feel like they have power, so they're going to stop and... It's their world that they have the power to say no to you. So, FYI. I'm sorry if you're a gatekeeper watching this. You know, deep down inside, just a little bit, that you love to tell people no. Anyway, sorry. Got sidetracked. But it's a snack or a gift of food or something. Listen to this. Dave Carroll. Everybody knows Dave. Dave's an awesome guy. A-type data, right? Lion share. All of that. He's a good dude, but his thing, what he was doing with property managers is mind-blowing. Here's what you do. You get plates made up with your logo. Yeah, it costs a couple bucks. But you get plates, platters, whatever, with your logo information. Real quick, Not I'm not talking about a, a, a book. I'm talking about boom logo, boom phone number, window cleaning. Remember, the quickest solution. You sell them later on the information, but they don't need to know window cleaning, pressure washer, uh, high dusting, blah, blah, blah. We're certified. We're bonded. We're you just, nobody's reading that crap. No one cares. No one, that doesn't make people call you right away. They're going to want to find that out anyway. Boom logo, boom phone number, boom window cleaning. Maybe an email. That's, we'll get crazy, right? <laughs> what you do is you make up some fresh cookies or you go to a bakery and get some fresh cookies and you put them on your plate and you bring them in. And drop them off at a place and say, hey, hey, FYI, I just wanted to drop these off. We're uh, new in the area. We're doing a couple other buildings. Just want to say, hey, drop you guys off some cookies. First off, no one, especially in an office setting, will ever turn away food from you. Ever. Food in an office? These people are like sharks, right? If Think about, if you worked in an office at one point, what happened when somebody, oh, somebody brought cake. It's in the... <laughs> It's in the break room. The cake is gone. There's just a pile of frosting, the edge frosting, and a, and a crusty knife. Like, they are hounds for food. You bring in cookies. You bring in even a vegetable tray. You bring in something that they can set out that doesn't go bad right away, right? Not like shrimp or something like that. You put something in there. They eat the food. Everybody's in there. In and out, in and out, in and out. Well, oh, who brought the food? Oh, is it Dorothy's? Is it her birthday? And I forget. No, because as they're eating it. <laughs> I don't know, Dorothy. They're seeing your logo, right? They're seeing that logo. Oh, the window cleaners did. Oh, yeah, no, the window. Well, who's going to eventually get in? Not only is this building understanding you, but the property manager is going to wonder where the food came from. They're going to be seeing it. They're Now you're in their building. You're in the presence. You, you've you introduced yourself without introducing yourself. And it costs you $10, right? These jobs, people, are over $1,000. I, I mean, you're talking about commas at this point, right, in some of these jobs. What? Yes, it costs money to get into these people, but it's not a lot of money. But if it gets you in, it gets you in. The other thing what I would do is say, if you're sending a platter of cookies, I put on a little handwritten sticky note. I have my my office uh, goddess usually do it because my handwriting is awful if you've ever seen it. But something saying, I would love to set up a meeting to talk about your window cleaning. That's it. That's it. It's so nonchalant. Well, then it gets to somebody. Now, the gatekeeper's going to bring it in. They'll probably steal three cookies, but they're going to bring that platter up there. They're going to set it there. They're going to hand it to somebody. Or somebody's going to be down there and go, what's this? Oh, can you bring that up? It makes it to where it needs to go. No one throws food away. They don't. And 
The second part of that is that when you give somebody a gift, they instantly feel as though they need to repay you somehow, subliminally or not. So now the guy is even like, oh, man, that was really nice. Yeah, I'm going to give these guys to see what they're about. I'm not going to hire them, but I'm going to see what they are. Like they, they feel obligated to some degree to you know, help you out, pay you back for the food, return the favor and that type of thing. It gets you past the gatekeeper. It gets you on good favors and people will remember you. This is something that if you do this, I've heard it also done where they've set up the meeting and they've brought in a bunch of food so that the after the meeting, not only do you show up with food, it's a meeting, they're expecting this dry thing. They get all this stuff and go, whoa, wow, this is awesome. Yeah, let's put it in the break room for everybody. Oh, I hope I got enough for everybody. Oh, man, this will be great. Now, all of a sudden, on top of that, everybody else is seeing you. And then the property manager is going to hear about it from other people going, oh, that platter, was that from the window cleaners? Well, he's going to be like, oh, well, not the window cleaners we have now, but they're people who want to get the building. And they're like, oh, if they're bringing cookies, we should hire them. Right? you got to think outside the box on this stuff. Thanks to Dave Carroll for that kind of thing. He went crazy. Talk to him about that. He's, He's the genius on that kind of thing. But property managers are like that. You are dating. You're trying to impress them by this stuff. Right? They don't want to sit down with you and you just, uh, you know, tighten your tie and you go, <clears throat> well, uh, we are bonded and we are insured and, uh, you know, we are able to uh, facilitate anything. That... They don't want that. They talk to a billion people. What sets you apart? When you show up and go, hey, I brought you cookies. Right? You're setting yourself apart. They deal with people all day long. The property managers are the managers. They manage the building. They deal with the heating and air conditioning and the fire department to check sprinklers and the how to break away from the noise. That's what you need to think about with commercial clients. How do you break away from the constant noise to differentiate yourself? That's one of the really, really good, good, good ways. You can't do it with direct mail in a normal, you know, flyer. You can't do it with uh, going in with a little uh, carbonless copy like we talked about before and going, ah, yeah, so I got your bid here. That's not what it is. You can't just go in and go, hey, uh, my name is Jersey. I'd like to talk to the property manager. You can do that sometimes, but you're going to get a really bad close rate. What I will do by going in that way is I'll walk in and I'll say, hey, uh, my name is Jersey. I'm actually just looking for the property managers, just the information for them. i got to send them some information about the building. You don't have to talk about it. They go, what is this regarding? Ah, it's just regarding some of the maintenance. You don't have to say, well, I'm going to be sending them a bid, right? Um, they're, they'd want you out of there. You're not giving them anything, right? You could shoot an email to them all day long, and the gatekeeper, for the most part, won't stop that. They'll give you a card. They'll, oh, let me write down his number. I don't even, you know, I just, maybe an email. I got to shoot him some pictures of the outside of the building or whatever. What is it regarding? Oh, it's regarding the window cleaning. Right? Oh, if they think that you're there. This is, this is the, listen, there's a theory called the ladder slash clipboard theory. I call it the clipboard theory because this works better for us. Ladder's the same way. If you carry a ladder or a clipboard onto any job site or in any building, anywhere without government clearance, you can walk right into any part of the building. No one will stop you. If you look like you're doing, you know what you're doing and you're there on purpose, they'll let you in. Think about it. The last time somebody did invite you in, they call you up. Hey, uh, Joe, I need you to uh, come out to the building and give me an estimate. You just walk in and start doing your thing. If you do that without anybody actually inviting you, nobody questions you just like the other time. So getting in and getting that information is really the only thing. But getting out there and being on site either to get the bid, to get the information, to bring them cookies, to they're going to take a lot more. This commercial is that hot babe or studly guy (laughs) that you've been staring at forever. That is the, that's the whale. That is the job that you want to get the table changing turn tide changing tide changing table turning table turn whatever it's the job right so doing what you can to get them to woo them to date them until the next one because you're a player you're a player in this game right um that's what you have to do so think outside the box on how to get past first and foremost the gatekeeper to talk to the person that that needs it now the person, the property manager, the maintenance, per, the, whoever, head of maintenance, they are the people who benefit from you doing a great job because first and foremost, they need a job done perfectly. They need somebody that's on their back and call because it makes them look good. They have enough hats on their plate. A second thing is if you can save them money, that's even better 
Because now, guess what? Oh, uh, hey, yeah, I hired a new window cleaning company. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's going to save us 10%. Wow, right? The property manager just became a, a, a hero. So getting them on board with what you are selling, that you're going to be better, that you're going to be faster, that you're going to be quieter, more courteous on site, that you're not going to stink, that you don't smoke in their buildings, that you don't anything makes them look better. They're going to love that. They're going to love that. And as soon as they get in with you, they're going to send you more work because usually they have other things. The other part of it is, is even if a property manager themselves doesn't have more work, or more jobs or more buildings, they are friends with other property managers. They go to meetings. Like B&I for us, it's the same thing with property managers because they need to talk tenants. They need to say, oh, so-and-so needs a new building office. They got to put them somewhere. They need that. And you getting into there is such a wildfire of, of big ticket jobs that it's so worth bringing in cookies. The other thing is for meetings, when they're doing meetings, if you can find out Bringing in those gifts, like I said, is getting your information in front of the right people. Now, once you have the job, well, let me re- let me start that over. Bidding the job is different on commercial than it is on anything else because these jobs are so big. I got guys call me all the time, go, "Hey, I need help bidding this. Can you bid it for me?" Yeah, let's let's do it. We'll get the pictures. They email them over to me as many as they can. We'll start talking about it. And this is how you bid commercial jobs. This is everybody. This isn't doesn't matter if you're in California, Texas, New York. This is how you bid commercial jobs. What you do is you take a building, multiple buildings, one building, whatever, and break it down into the smallest sections you can. So I always say that one section side of a building. So if there's lots of little things, what I'm going to do is look at one little side. I'm going to say this side Right? There's 10 windows in the third floor, 10, 10 on the ground. Okay, so spider webs are in two. Ter- that little section right there is going to take me 45 minutes, we'll say. Just putting it out there. I'm using water for pole, whatever. 45 minutes, that section is going to take me. Right? If you bid it on small sections, now you're not looking at the whole project. A whole project's overwhelming. A whole project you're not actually looking at. You're pulling a figure out of your ass, literally. And going, uh, take, I figured a good $20,000, right? I've had people where they've told me, hey, I already know the bid. I'm bidding it $22,000, $22 something. I'm bidding $22,000. I want to know from you. We looked at it, broke it down. Every single building came back with the numbers. He goes, dude, he's like, I'm at like $6,500 because I bid it that way. I said, listen. That may sound drastic. You're not going to get it at 20 whatever thousand dollars because the other guys are bidding it relatively close to where you are. But you bid it at such a small increment, you're not going to be wrong. If you just pick a number out of your butt, you're going to be wrong, either overbid or underbid. If you get the overbid, great, then you make extra money. If you're underbid, then that sucks, right? But if you break it down into a small section where I know this side of the building will cost take me this long. I know this side of the building will take me this long. You start adding it all up. Your big piece of paper has got all those numbers on it. You'll never, ever be wrong. No matter if you second guess the price, if you go, oh, really? That's what it is? That seems awful high. Oh, that seems awful. But it's not. You've just bid the building appropriately. You didn't pull it out of your butt. You're not guessing. There is no guessing on that side of level, right? There's just no guessing. Some people want to count windows. I don't count windows. Not only is it a pain in the ass, but uh, if you count windows, uh, you have to have such a breakdown for transoms on the first floor, transoms on the second floor, transoms on the third floor, nine over nine, or six over sixes, whatever your building has. On the one side, frameless, non-frame, there's so many variables that it's just a pain in the ass. I just look at it. When you're in this business for long enough, you can bid it this way. If you're still new, that is a little bit more tricky. Maybe count windows to start. You're probably not working on commercial jobs. If you're new, new in the business, you might want to work on some other things. But if you're in it long enough, you can look at a side of the building. It's going to take us this long. It's going to take us this long. And this part, that's a pain in the ass. That part will go easy. This part, I can have a ground guy. That part, I need a water fed pole. I need to get another extension. Right? You can break it down. That is how you bid these jobs. Don't overwhelm yourself and don't kick yourself in the butt later when you bid something wrong because you just pulled a number out of uh, 20,000, you're wrong. I'm going to tell you right now, you're wrong. Look at the building, break it down in the smallest sections you possibly can. That's how you're going to bid it. I had a property manager, my first property manager ever. This is 10, 15 years ago, right? 
I gave him a bit. I got in through someone who gave me the information. I talked to him. Said, hey, this is my first commercial. Bit. I was honest. This is my fir- first commercial, man. I would love the opportunity to really build this. We're an up-and-coming company. I really want to do everything in my power to make you happy and do what I have to to do that. I gave him the bit. He goes, ah. I said, oh, man, I screwed it up. He goes, double it, and uh, you got yourself a job. I said, double it? You mean cut it in half? He's no, man, you're way too low. right? You're not going to find that. But if you bid a building like I did, and I was half the price of the job, and still I was probably could have squeaked it out more. He did. He did me such a solid. I never raised the price in in forever. I mean, all the years that probably ten years of doing that building, I've never raised the price because he's just a good dude. Actually, he left. Somebody else came in, so I probably that will eventually raise. But anyway, so that doesn't happen. But if you're underbid like that, when you're looking at the whole building. You've done it. You've overestimated, underestimated. I can do that in a half a day. Two guys, half a day. Oh, you know, I'm coming back for the second day going, what the heck happened? How did I mess that up? So break it into small pieces. That is how you bid these. Remember that. If you get nothing else from this whole thing, remember that's how you bid commercial properties. If you ever need help, like I said, that's what we're there for too. Shoot me an email. Send me some pics. Josh at windowcleaningresource.com. I promise I'm not taking your jobs, man. I'm just there to help you do any bids, double check things, give you my piece of advice. And I've helped a lot of people that way too. So uh, hopefully I could help you out that way also. But another thing that has to deal with commercial that is in no other industry to this degree is upkeep. You have to be relevant. You have to continue to be amazing all the way down the line. Why? You're going to get into this building with window cleaning. Or if you're a pressure washer watching, like I said, comment in the YouTube channel. Let me know you're a pressure washer. You're going to get into the job doing a single thing. But guess what? We all do a handful of services. A handful of services that these people need. All of them. They're hiring them all out. No property managers pressure washing their facade. They're not doing concrete cleaning. They're not washing the inside windows. They're not washing the the drops or the... uh, uh, I've had glass ceiling... um, Uh, entrance ways where they had to clean the top. I've done um, bank drive-ups that were part of a building. I've done column cleaning, spider removal in stairwells, all this stuff, right? And you're not going to overwhelm them. And as soon as they're like, all right, let's do it, you're going to be like, oh, we do all this other stuff. And you're like, ah, dude, like, I don't even know you yet. But keeping that relationship will open the doors for everything else you do. 99.9% of the people you do work for do not know all the services you offer. That's the truth. Advertise as much as you want. Think that you're amazing at doing it. You're not. They don't know. They don't care. Only thing they're worried about is what they need at that exact time. So they only know you do window cleaning. They might know you do gutter cleaning too, but they don't know that you do all the other stuff. Same thing with commercial. The more services you offer, the more services you'll get from them. Down the road, that's not right away. So don't push them and scare them right away. Just like dating someone, right? You don't want to all of a sudden, after the first date, be like, I love you. I do gutter cleaning, pressure, you know, right? You can send it to them on a nonchalant, but later as the relationship is building, you come to a better, um, you know, part of the relationship, then you can tell them you love them, right? Then you can tell them that you do all these other services and slowly start offering them. Sending people, Racine, the, the city I was in is very Danish, so donuts are a big thing. I'm learning as I moved now to North Carolina, donuts aren't a thing because they're nowhere, but there is a big thing. So we would send... Dana, like bakery, we would send donuts to these places. We would go over and one morning I would do five in a morning, like a week. I would go out and do all these, bring them in. Hey, what's going on? I just put a sticker on the box. You know, if you ever need anything, here's my personal number, like that kind of thing. I'm not selling anything. I don't want anything. I don't need anything. I just want you to eat donuts and to, to know that I'm here for you. And that literally, literally speaks, speaks huge for you. Just like busting your hump to try to get them to do more for them than you've done for anybody else speaks volumes. You have to upkeep them. You have to make sure that they're continually happier. They're going to go out and find somebody else. You know, these are the whales. These are the ones when you can have a handful of these big jobs, that's a big ticket. You got 10 of these jobs. Now you're talking, you know, potentially, potentially $50,000 plus dollars in these jobs. And that's, uh, you know, that could be low end. You could have way more than that depending on the size of the jobs and buildings and complexes that you're doing. So you have to upkeep them. A box of donuts here and there is completely worth it. Dropping everything to clean a turd out of a stairwell is definitely worth it. 
make them happy and keep them happy. That's the way to get them. Now, real quick, touching on scheduling. I know uh, I'm a little bit long here in my podcast, but um, scheduling is this. The best part about commercial, other than the nice ticket, which you have to be able to float payroll for these large tickets because they're not going to pay you as soon as you're done. They're not writing you a check going, all right, thanks, Sonny. Right? You have to expect you're going to have a 30, 60 day pay. The better relationship, the faster these checks can come. I've had them quicker than that. By the end of the month of the month that I've done the work, I've gotten the checks, right? But you got to be able to float it. But scheduling is the best part, in my opinion. Why? Is because a commercial job, say they say they want it done every six months. They're not going to tell you, they may say spring or fall, but you're going to say, okay, well, we're actually uh, in our schedule. We have a, a, an opening the uh, third week of June and uh, you know December 1st. Now, if you're in a cold weather area, that may be hard to do, I get, but you schedule these guys for times of the year that suck for everything else. When the times that you're laying guys off, you're sitting on your thumb, you're doing whatever, because you could be on a job for two days, that fills up two solid days in a time that other people aren't even hiring you. So finding the best place to schedule these, that's best. If you can get a quarterly big gig, woo, that's great. I've done stuff uh, in the coldest part of the year because guess what? I got nothing else going on. It's like negative three degrees. I'm going to clean with my windshield washer fluid. And if it sucks, I can come back. You know, those are times I'm feeling time. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling the dog days of summer, right? I'm feeling the gaps between holidays or whatever. It's great to be able to schedule. So keep that in mind. Schedule your commercial when it's convenient for you. Not necessarily them because they don't care. They need it done X amount of times a year because that's what they were told that they need to have it done. So keep that in mind. I'm going to revisit this again. I know it. I would love to hear from you. Comment down below. Remember, you could win a swag bag. That's the uh, all coveted Ed Array pin, the shirt, everything, uh, plus a $50 store credit to buy whatever you want. Uh, and speaking of buying whatever you want, please, please call me. I got customers too that said, hey, I didn't call you. Uh, to put this in, I don't want to bother you. Dude, that's how I make my money, man. That's why I do this stuff, is to get people like you to order through me personally. My number, 862-312-2026. Definitely hit me up. Let me know. Shoot me a text. Uh, first off, usually people text me and go, hey, man, I'm ready to order. I'll call you right back. Uh, Any time of the day, uh, you know I am on live chat 5 to 11, uh, Sunday through Thursday. I'm working all the time. Definitely let me know. I appreciate it too. If you're part of the nation, what is up? Thank you again. Please comment, like, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss anything else. And from me, I truly, truly appreciate you guys watching, hanging out with me for a little bit. Let me know what you think. Tell me your thoughts. And until next week, go out and be epic and uh, make a bunch of money, huh?